By the time the World Cup was staged again in Mexico the following year, the young Argentinian was reaching his peak. Butragueño of Spain scored four goals in one game against Denmark. first goal came against the holders Italy. They were eliminated in the second round. Argentina progressed to the quarter-final against England, where Maradona scored one of the greatest goals Enrique. ever seen. Maradona. Maradona. Prima Maradona. Halli, Maradona. Und Maradona. Ein super Tor. And one that was not so good. In the semi-final, Belgium found him impossible to contain. France and West Germany met in the other semi-final. After the Germans took the lead, nothing went right for the French. The European champions would not reach the World Cup final. In the final in Mexico City, the Argentinians went into an early lead. Toque de Maradona, carga Buruchaga. Ya pasó la mitad de la cancha. Enrique, Enrique, toque de Enrique. Buscando adentro. Se va Valdano, se va Valdano, se va Valdano, se va Valdano. Le pega Valdano. Cuando scored a second, the trophy looked to be on its way to Buenos Aires for a second time. Argentina Valdano. Argentina 2, Alemania 0. Jorge Valdano. Viene centro, centro fuerte para el cabezazo. Ahí llegó el cabezazo, remate gol. Gol de Alemania, Rubenigue. Argentina 2, Alemania 1, Rubenigue. The Germans. Bien, el centro fuerte, 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 fuerte para el despeje. Ahí quedó Berto de cabeza. Gol de Alemania al empate. Llegó Uri Veller para el empate. Alemania 2, Argentina. A perfect pass. Yo estoy buscando Maradona, toque de primera. Atención, se escapa Boruchaga. Atención, se va Boruchaga. Se va, se va Boruchaga. Se va solo, se va solo. Sí, le pega, le pega. Tres a dos. 
en este campeonato de México. Es la segunda conquista en la historia. Atención, terminó, terminó, terminó. Ganó Argentina 3 a 2. Argentina es el nuevo campeón Diego Maradona del mundo, led his country to football's greatest honor. Only European and South American countries have found themselves at the summit of the game. As football moves through the 90s, other parts of the world are challenging their supremacy. Abu Dhabi, one of the United Arab Emirates, not a country with a football tradition. But here, as in most of the Arab Peninsula, facilities for sport are second to none. The brand new 65,000 all-seater Zayed Sports City is one of the finest stadiums in the world. It's an ideal venue for a major international football or athletics competition. In neighboring Saudi Arabia, the magnificent King Fahd Stadium was built to stage the FIFA World Youth Championship in 1989. The same year in Kuwait, the Kasma Stadium held the first peace and friendship games for the Islamic world. Kuwait were the first country from the Gulf to qualify for the World Cup Finals in 1982, although their appearance was overshadowed by controversy in their match against France. A dispute over a French goal incensed the leader of the Kuwaiti delegation, who stormed onto the field in protest. However, Arab football also made positive contributions in the ages. Qatar reached the final of the World Youth Championships in 1981. And in 1989, Saudi Arabia won the World Under-16 Championship. The United Arab Emirates surprised many by qualifying for the 1990 World Cup Finals in Italy. <laughs> This goal against South Korea secured their place. The Emirates owe their prosperity to oil. It's produced the money to create stadia like the Zayed Sports City. Their players can enjoy first-class facilities in which to train and are guided by the best coaches that money can buy. The population is only 1.6 million. There's no heritage of football and there's no fanatical support here as in Italy or Brazil. For this pre-World Cup friendly match against Sweden and Dubai, only 3,000 people came to watch. A situation that can only improve, according to the UAE's team manager. عمر الكرة أو الكرة المنظمة في الإمارات عمر قصير. إنما مع الوقت حسين الجمهور بدء أخذ أخذ تزايد في الإمارات. لا شك أن توافر المنشآت الرياضية في دولة الإمارات مشجع الجمهور ينجذب لكرة القدم. ومع الوقت حسين الجمهور جمهور كرة القدم خاصة يزداد عدده يوم عن يوم. Football in the Middle East is developing rapidly. Their investment seems certain to produce results in the future. Though not everyone may think so.
There's one place, however, where there are no prohibitions on football, Africa. Ils n'ont pas besoin d'être encadrés contrairement par exemple aux footballeurs européens qui ont besoin d'être euh, encadrés, qui ont besoin d'être cernés. Le footballeur africain est né footballeur et c'est ce qui explique le succès. From Cairo to the Cape, Africa is obsessed by football. The biggest impression left on the world game by Africa has been by the North Africans. In 1982, Algeria became the first African country to beat a major European team in the World Cup when they overcame the West Germans. But the greatest potential for football lies south of the Sahara. Football first arrived in Africa with the European colonists, but the locals were quickly won over by the game. In 1911, Hearts of Oak, Black Africa's oldest club, were founded in Accra in Ghana. Their connection with Britain was so strong that as part of Ghana's independence celebrations in 1957, Hearts of Oak invited Stanley Matthews, England's most famous player of the day, to share the occasion. They crowned him King of Football. With many countries gaining independence, African football became better organized throughout the 1960s, but suffered from one major problem. The lack of financial resources meant that the most gifted left to play as professionals in Europe. Soccer in Africa just isn't professional. But if the clubs and government encourage professional soccer instead of the current amateur game, they would produce very good players. In soccer terms, African players have the necessary abilities and ball control. What they lack is the training, the alimentation, the ability. What they lack is training, the training, proper facilities, and a good diet. For now, African professionals continue to display their skills in Europe. On the world stage, however, Black Africa's first appearance in the World Cup in 1974 was disastrous. Zaire went as African champions. and they returned home in disgrace, having lost heavily. The team were disbanded by presidential decree. Eight years later, in Spain, Cameroon showed how much standards had improved. Italy, later to become world champions, were held to a draw. Cameroon went home proudly, drawing all their games. In 1985, a world title went to Africa for the first time. The World Under-16 Championship was won by Nigeria. In 
one other African country not part of FIFA may play a big part in the future of the game. Football is South Africa's only truly multiracial sport. It has a professional league and an enormous popular following. Reforms have brought about the possibility of South Africa retaking its place in the football community. The moment we're part of FIFA and we're part of the world, a brand new era opens up and there's so much scope. The younger generation can aspire to represent the country and can aspire to become the Maradonas and the Pellas of this country. The politicians in this country can get the act together. We can rid ourselves of all the disciplinary laws like apartheid, which is taboo, which is cancer. You can't cure it, you must get rid of it. Bring about a normal society that us take our rightful place internationally. And my God, I think we'll, we'll shake the world.